Firstly, uh, brothers and sisters in SNEM, it's a uh, privilege for me to be here with you this uh, evening and with the uh, youth in the community, inshallah, maybe a few more will come in, but if not, it doesn't matter. There's only three or four people here. As long as we all can get something beneficial from what is said. I'm going to be speaking very briefly about justice in Islam, justice in Al Islam. And uh, my young brothers and sisters, this is a very deep topic. It's a very big topic. There are books that are written about specific aspects of justice in Islam. So this very brief talk that I'm going to give is just going to be somewhat of an outline of a, of a general concept of justice in Islam and then give you some examples of how we can work towards establishing justice here in America and I will also give you some uh, in regards to giving some of those examples of how we can establish justice or maintain justice as Muslims in America I will give you an example a contemporary example of some injustices to uh, to raise your awareness first of all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in his most beautiful names reflect the concept of justice in three different names first Allah Azza wa Jal describes himself as Al Adl he is the just this is one of his names Another one of his names is El Haq. He is the truth and the one who bestows the rights and the truth. And he is El Muqsid. He is the avenger. He is the one who will ultimately bestow all justice to all of his slaves on the day of resurrection. Firstly, the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, Al Adl. If I can give you uh, a brief description of his name, then I'll give you an example of, of Adl in the creation. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, in this name, Al Adl, it has the meaning that Allah Azza wa Jal created everything with balance, with equity, and He is the one who placed everything in its rightful place. This is the meaning, part of the meaning of Al Adl. That Allah Azza wa Jal created a universal balance in the creation. He placed everything in its rightful place in its uh, mizan in the proper scales, every single thing. Allah Azza wa Jal and His name, Al Adl, in placing everything in its right balance in regards to the Sharia to Islamia. The Sharia to Islamia, justice for the human being. How many of you have ever been to a circus before, young brothers or sisters? You ever been to a circus before? You ever seen a circus? You ever seen the guy that walks on the tightrope? And he's holding what on a tightrope? He's holding a pole, very good. And he has to hold this pole right in the middle and it can't be too far to the right nor can it be too far to the left. Because if he holds this pole too far to the right, he will lose, or she, is mainly he, he will lose his balance and he will fall off of the tightrope. So justice in Islam, in Al Adl, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned in terms of the mission of this Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. He said, "Wa kadalika jana kum ummatan wasida." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "And thus He has made you a rightly guided community." 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that this means udula. Or another uh, hadith is al-adul. That the middle community is the balanced community. That we don't go too far to the right or too far to the left in any matter. Why is this? Because if we as human beings see in our society things going too far to the right or too far to the left, it upsets the natural balance and the natural justice that Allah has placed in this creation for human beings to live their life in society. The second name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Haq. Al-Haq that I mentioned relating to justice. And Allah is the one who bestowed the hukuk al-insan, the rights of the human being. Al-Haq is the one who is the truth and the reality, and he is the one who bestowed the hukuk, the rights of the human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right over us that we worship him and no one but him. We associate no partners with him. And then he has bestowed certain rights that our bodies have certain rights over us, like your eyes have certain rights over us, and your tongue, your family members have certain rights over you, and other human beings who are outside of your family have certain rights over you. They have certain rights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al muqsid He is the one who is the ultimate bestower of justice. Now, He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who set up the balance of all things. He's the one who is the one who instituted justice and He is the one who revealed and gave us the standards of what justice is and what justice isn't. This is very important for us to understand because when we live in societies, certain people say, well, certain things are a, are a justice or an injustice. What is the criterion for that which is just and for that which is not justice? It is he, Azawajal, who gave and revealed and set the parameters of what is just and what is not just. And then in the nature of the human beings ourselves, we have universal and specific understandings of our society of what is justice and what is not justice. And the responsibility of Muslims is to work towards instituting a system of justice for all people. Allah said in the Quran, Well, to come, Minkum Umatun, Yarun al Khiri, we are no noble mafroof, we are Hana no Munka, Wa Ila Ika, Humumuflihun. He Subahan who was Allah said, Let there be amongst you a group, a community that calls towards goodness and establishes or enjoins what is right and forbids what is wrong and these are successful people. Then he subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Kuntu khayru ummatil ufrijat lil nasi ta'amu bil ma'rufi wa ta'amu munkar wa tu'minu wa billah. You are the best nation evolved for mankind because you enjoin what is good and right and just you forbid what is wrong and the injustice, and you believe in Allah. What is this good or this mahroof? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the nature of every human being, within our very nature, inclined us towards, lean towards justice and gives the human being a natural repugnance to that which is not just or that which is uh, injustice. When he, Azawajal, said in the Quran, The nature of the human being 
or the nature that Allah who originated everything upon, this is the same nature that the human beings were originated upon. This fitrah. And this nature that, that we have, brothers and sisters in Islam, has a natural disposition towards lean, towards mahroof, and has a natural disposition to be against the munkar. For instance, there are some people who live in the uh, jungle area of Africa. They're called pygmy, pygmy people. You ever heard of pygmy people before? Pygmy people, it's a, it's a tribe. They're people who worship nature. These are people who have never had any type of evangelists come to them to tell them about Christianity or tell them about Deen of Islam. They have a very traditional tribal society. And they have no knowledge of any revealed book of this tribe. They don't know about a Torah or a Zabur or an Injil or Quran. They don't know about this book, about these books that Allah revealed. But if you go to these people and ask them, is a man marrying a man good? They will say no. They will say it's munkar, even though, well, they won't speak the Arabic language, but if they, in their language, in their pygmy language, they would use the words, no, that, that's munkar. Because in their nature, and in their system, they know that this is despicable, bad behavior that will cause an imbalance or will cause injustice in society. Therefore, they say they don't do this. And in their society, if you, were, if you go to them and say a person who, who gives someone some food who's hungry, if you go to them and you say, what type of act is this of giving some food to a person who's hungry and doesn't have anything, they would say this is mahroof, even if they don't have this word in their language, they say this is good because this helps alleviate or it could stop causing injustice in the society. Mahroof and munkar. Muslims have a duty to, to enjoy justice, to promote justice and promote goodness in any society that we're in. And who do we start with first, do you think? Who do we start with first? We start with being just and enjoying justice upon ourselves as Muslims firstly. This is what the Quran says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-mu'minuna wa mu'minatu ba'tuhum awliya'u ba'tin ya'munu bil-wa'rufin wa yuhana al-munkar wa yuqeeman al-salat wa yutuna al-zakat wa yutim Allah wa rasul ula'ika siyahamuhum Allah inna Allah azizun hakeem. The believing men and the believing women are maintainers and protectors of each other. And then the rest of this ayah is giving a description of the attributes of believing men and believing women. The first is they enjoy what is right and what is just. They forbid that that is wrong and unjust. They establish the prayers, the five prayers. They pay the, the charity. They establish a social system that will help take care of those people who don't have the means of taking care of themselves. They obey Allah and the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And these are the people who will receive the immediate mercy of Allah. Surely Allah is the mighty and the wise. This is the first obligation. Then the second obligation is to work towards establishing justice and fairness in the broader society. These good standards. Now, in regards to justice, there is a broader social justice theme within Islam. And then there is also justice from a courtroom perspective, or from a jurisprudence perspective. Now we as Muslims, 
in regards to the social justice perspective, let me tell you something. I want you to think hard about this. If you and I, as Muslims, are only concerned about justice and equity for Muslims, and are not concerned about justice and equity for people who are not Muslims, we suffer a spiritual disease. We suffer a spiritual disease. When we look at the early history of Islam, before the five prayers were established in Mecca to Muqarrabah, before the institution of zakat was established, before fasting the month of Ramadan was established, before Hajj was established, before all these wajibat that we have that we must do now were established, what were the primary concerns of Rasulullah Teaching the people about a tawheed, the oneness of God, and addressing the social injustices that the Arabs practiced during the time of El Jahir. The injustices of the female ba uh, baby being buried alive. About the strong in the society usurping the rights of the weak and the poor. About freeing slaves. This was primary the message of the early period of Islam in the times of Rasulullah Rasulullah also in his lifetime established a system of judgments that was not practiced during the times of the Arabs before Islam. Rasulullah established that human beings through the revealing of Allah that human beings just couldn't go and take the lives of other human beings just because they had a grievance or felt that someone did something wrong. He established a system of judgments where people could answer the charges against them, that evidence can be presented, and then that a judgment can be made, and only then if it was a capital offense, then the person would be executed. Prior to the time of Rasulullah in the Hijaz, if someone felt like someone disrespected them, or maybe if someone did something to someone's family member, the person could be killed without any court proceeding. It's called vigilantism. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this in the Quran. La taqtulu nafsu lati haramu Allah illa bil haq. That you can't kill a person, you can't take the life of a soul that Allah has made sacred, except that they're given their right, that they have the right, only in the proper circumstance. This is why I truly believe, irrespective of what he preached, the Yemeni American brother Anwar al alaqi who was killed last week, was killed unjustly. Why do I say that? How many of you heard about Anwar al alaqi You heard he was killed last week by a U.S. drone. Why do I say he was killed and was not given his heart, his right? Because he was never charged with one crime. He was never indicted. I'm speaking according to American law and Islamic law. He was never charged with one crime. He was never indicted. No evidence was given against him. He was never brought to court. 
Then the president signed something that said, okay, he can be killed, and he was killed. This is not our standard of justice. And